All right, so I want to talk a little bit about something called vertical free, free fall. Um, also, while I'm doing this, my dog is right next to me chewing on a bone. So if you hear that, if you hear something weird, that's probably what it is. So vertical free fall, I, I just grabbed this picture here to use where this lady's dropping a ball. Uh, let me make that a little bigger. And then after one second, it goes 9.8. Two seconds, it goes a little bit faster, and so on. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. We'll come back to this. But first off, free fall. Let's, let's talk about what free fall means. I'm sure you've heard the term before. Now, free fall, the way that we're going to define it, an object is falling freely if... The only force acting on it is equal to the weight force, which is gravity. So that's the only time you'll ever see it. That, that would be if you have something just, uh, if you just have, draw. If you're holding onto a ball and then you let go and the ball, we would know, would have velocity going down. The only force acting on it is gravity. So for there, we, we would say it's in free fall. So that's what we mean when we say free fall. Um, it's also important to note that there's other times other than just dropping it that we would consider an object to be in free fall. So if you were to take a ball, or let's go to the picture of this lady. If she were to throw this ball up first, maybe it goes up to here and then it turns back around, that ball is still in free fall. Now, we tend to neglect air resistance, at least for now. We'll talk a little bit about air resistance later and we talk about it in other classes. However, we basically assume a vacuum. Now, that'll trip people up because we don't live in a vacuum. We have air resistance, we have all sorts of stuff. But we're going to not worry about that now for the simplicity of the problem. So we're going to assume a vacuum. At least for now, if it's specified otherwise, that there's air resistance or something, then we'll talk about that. But for now, we're not going to worry about drag force. So what's accelerating this ball? Well, we'll look at something called the gravitational. Acceleration. I'm sure you can hear I'm really munching on the bone now. Now the gravitational acceleration um, that you'll have in free fall is G. Now G is equal to, sorry, <laughs> puppies right here. G is equal to nine point, he's moving, oh, he's sitting on my device. Let me move over. <laughs> I'll move for you, puppy. Sorry about that. Well, now he wants to move again. All right. Sorry about that. So anyways, G is about 9.81 meters per second squared. And let's talk about the units real quick because we know what meters per second is. That's telling us how far you're traveling during some time. The meters per second, let's look at this picture. So you go, you start at zero meters per second, then you speed up to 9.8 meters per second, then 9.6 meters per second, then 29.4, so on and so forth. It keeps, it keeps speeding up and it'll continue to speed up at 9.8 meters every second 9.81 meters per second every second that's what the meters per second means i just want us to conceptually understand what the units actually mean and again in the real world you'll reach something called terminal velocity and that's where that's where you'll have no acceleration where your drag force drag force is a, a function of velocity is equal to the weight force but we're not going to worry about that right now we talked about that in the mechanics playbook, 
playlist. So if that's something you're really interested in, uh, it's there. Okay, so we talked about that. So G is our gravitational acceleration. And this is what it is near Earth's surface. It's not always 9.81 meters per second squared, but uh, for most of the problems, we're going to assume that it's... Oh. <laughs> What's wrong, buddy? We're going to assume that it's near Earth's surface. Uh, if specified otherwise, we can address that. If we look at, for example, uh, moon's gravity, it's about one-sixth of Earth. So moon's gravity is, well, the gravity from Earth divided by six. And that's how you would determine that if we're working on a problem that have, have, uh, occurs on the moon, which there will be some like that. Um, so yeah, that is, that's that part. Uh, we, I talked a little bit about mass and its relationship in other videos, uh, in my mechanics playlist. If you're, if you want more in depth, um, analysis on that, but for now, let's move on. Um, so I'm not going to pull up a video for an example, but the classic problem that trips up feathers or er, <laughs> traps up physics students is imagine you had a feather. I can't really draw a feather. It's a bad feather. And imagine you had a green rock and a red feather that doesn't look like a feather and a rock that looks like a dot. But you get the idea. Let's say you drop them both from rest. And they both are at the same height. Which one hits the ground first? Well, intuitively, you're going to say the rock. And that will be true um, in the real world. But remember, we're assuming a vacuum. And in reality, they both hit at the same time. They both start at rest, so zero meters per second. And they both accelerate at 9.81 meters per second squared. So they both hit at the same time, uh, which is interesting because you wouldn't assume that based off <laughs> no don't step on my notebook it's a lot harder to do this with a puppy <laughs> there, there's your bone okay man that, this is just me talking to my dog so anyways they both land at the same time there's actually a video of it on youtube that's worth checking out if you don't believe me uh, I'm not going to talk too much about gravitational fields. Uh, I think I talk about that in my mechanics, so, well, I'll save that for now. But one thing I do want to talk about is the sign of G, because this also trips people up a lot. So the sign of G, we think of this as being a magnitude. So it's always positive. Now that does not mean the acceleration is positive. It actually depends on how you set up your coordinate system. Generally speaking, uh, generally speaking, when we set up a coordinate system, we let up be positive, uh, right be positive for x, up be positive for y. And if that's the case, then our acceleration in the y direction would be negative. Don't get it now, puppy. It'd be negative. While the ball is going up, if you were to throw a ball up in the air, just as an example, if I were to throw a ball up in the air and it comes back down, our acceleration is going to be negative. And it'll stay negative because... It's uniform. No. Get off that, buddy. I'm almost done. I just got to explain a little bit more. I'll just let him out and I'll finish this. And All right. Sorry about that. Now that the puppy's asleep, uh, I, can, I can continue here. 
Okay, so we talked about the sine of g. That's a magnitude, so we don't have to worry about that. And we talked about the acceleration. So let's just say, for example, you threw a ball up in the air. Let's test our knowledge here. At the very maximum, what is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared since we let y be positive, uh, up be positive for y. If we let down be positive, then that would change the sign of our acceleration. But I'm not doing that here. So it's going to be the same everywhere. That's the big thing. Here, 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 you're going to have the same acceleration, the same sign of acceleration. So I really want to make sure I bring that home. Okay, so now that we have that, let's work on the concepts of, a little more concepts of acceleration. Let's say you're on a building and you have a ball that's going to be dropped from rest. And after one second, after one second, it goes 10 meters per second. At two seconds, it goes 20 meters per second. After three seconds, it goes 30 meters per second. This is what we expect because of acceler it, the ball's accelerating. And at so many time, at some particular time, we're going to see the speed increase as the ball travels down. So let's say, for example, let's flip the scene real quick. Let's say you threw, it works the other way as well. Say you threw a ball straight up, and initially you threw it at, we'll say forty. We'll say forty meters per second. After one second, it'll slow down to thirty meters per second. At two seconds, we can put it at twenty meters per second. Per second and three seconds we can say at 10 meters per second so hopefully you kind of understand what's happening here you could see that at four seconds it comes to rest in other words it reaches its maximum the ball goes up 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 in four seconds and then it goes down, 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 back to the ground in four seconds. So the total uh, time in the air is eight seconds. It took four seconds to reach the peak and four seconds to come back down. I want to bring that point, just make sure we understand that. I wanted to show over here how just at certain time increments we see different speeds. Over here, we see the same thing, except we see the speed decreases. And if it takes four seconds to reach the maximum, it's going to take four seconds to come back. And I want to make sure that's uh, understood as well, because that's also an important thing to know. Okay, so let's say we go to, let's say this isn't Earth. Let's say this is, we're at a different planet. And here's us, and maybe we're up here. And let's say we have this ball, and it goes down. Let's say it goes down 162 meters. And let's say it does that in nine seconds. So what I want to know is we know G on Earth, but could we find G on this mystery planet? Okay? 
So, what do we know? We know... Let me draw this a little nicer. This whole length here to the bottom is our 162 meters. Okay? In other words, our delta Y is 162 meters and our time is 9 seconds. Now, we're going to say we dropped this at rest, so our initial velocity in the y direction is zero. This is our velocity. This is showing that it's velocity in the y direction. There is no x velocity. And this is this not means it's the initial velocity. And what we want to know is the acceleration in the y direction. Okay. Well, let's see what we have. We can use our kinematics equations that we derived earlier. We know delta y is v y naught t plus one half a y t squared. So this, if you remember, I'm just saying we're doing it in the y direction. I derived the kinematic equations assuming x, but it works just as well for the y. So what is it we want to solve for is A. So delta Y. First off, let's simplify this a little bit. This is zero. It's dropped from rest. So two delta Y divided by time squared is equal to our acceleration. And we know all these things. We know delta Y and we know time. Now, here's a good question. What is delta y? Well, we know the height of the cliff is 162 meters. But let's determine how we're setting up our coordinate system. So let's put... Let me draw this a little bit nicer. Uh, I'll even do a different color because I, I want to bring this home. We have our ball that's right at the start of the cliff. And then from there, what we can do is draw a X and Y axis. So if we let the up, if we let up be positive, we don't really need an X axis, but whatever, I'll put that there. If that's the case, if we're letting that be positive, then it's final minus initial. And our final position is going to be minus 162. And our initial position is going to be 0. So this is actually going to be negative 162. Because this is initial. Our final position is there. And it's final minus initial. You could think of it as you go in the negative y-axis direction. So minus 162 meters over 9 seconds squared. So we will get meters per second squared. And if you plug that in, you should get minus 4 about meters per second squared. So this planet, this is their G. This is the G for the mystery planet. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's do another example. Now in this example, let's say a boy or a girl, whatever, jumps up and has a hang time of one second. How high does the boy or girl or whatever jump? Well, we're going to have to use our kinematic equations. So first off, let's talk about what we know and what we don't know. If he starts at rest, we know that this is zero. And we know acceleration in the y direction. We're going to assume this is back on Earth. 
is minus 8.1 meters per second squared. And we know we want to find the maximum height. Now we know he's in the air a total of one second, right? But what we want, so we have this. It's a bit exaggerated, but to go from here, he doesn't jump. He goes up and down. I'm just spacing it out so we can see this. There's no distance here. This distance doesn't exist. But I want to emphasize, we want to know the peak. And to go up and down is one second. So to go to the top, that'll be time equals 0.5 seconds. And that's actually the time we want to work with. Now what we're interested in, in this case, is delta y. So if we set up a coordinate system in such a way that the starting point is our y-axis, we know our initial y position could just be 0. And then whatever delta y is, is the solution. So we can use the fact that delta y is v y naught times time plus 1 half a t squared. Well, there's no initial velocity, so this goes away. So delta y is 1 half minus 9.81 meters per second squared times 0.5 seconds squared. If we look at the units, 0.5 uh, seconds squared, so that's second squared. This second squared will cancel with this second squared, leaving us in just meters. That's what we want. And if we plug this in, we get minus 1.2 meters. Now, the sign might confuse us a little bit, but all this is saying is that the final position is below the initial position. And that's okay, that's, that's fine. What we wanna do is consider the fact that, so the negative can confuse people because what's that saying is the final position is below the initial position. But because we want to know how high the kid jumped, what we're looking at is the net vertical displacement, which for the trip down was negative. That being said, the, for the height, we're going to look at the absolute value of delta y. So we're going to say 1.2 meters. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. We're looking at the net vertical displacement. I think that makes a little more sense when you put it that way okay so we did that uh let's do do we have time for one more let's do one more so let's say you're you're up on a building again and let's say you throw let's do this a little nicer Let's say you throw this ball. I think we have time for one more. So let's do a problem where you're standing on a building and you have a ball and you throw the ball straight up at some initial velocity. We'll just say V Y naught. It comes down, 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 down. And it hits the ground at T equals seven seconds and has a final velocity in the y direction of 40 meters per second. How high up was the building you were standing on? Well, I'm gonna draw coordinate axis here. This is our y, and we'll let up be positive. I'm not gonna draw the x because it's not really needed. So what do we know? Well, velocity in the y direction is 40 meters per second but because we let up be positive this is going to be negative the ball is going to go up 
and the ball's going to move down this path. And it's not going to arc like that. That's, again, just to clarify. It's hard to draw right over it, so that's why I did it that way. But it's not actually moving in that sort of arc. We know the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. We know the change in time is 7 seconds. What we want to know is the change in y. Okay? So hopefully it makes sense why the velocity is negative. I want to make sure that's understood. It's because of how we set up our coordinate axes. We said up is positive, and because the ball's moving down, we're going to call that negative. Okay, so delta y, we know delta y is equal to the initial y t plus one half a y t squared. Right, that's our equation. Problem is we don't know the initial velocity. So this is a big part in kinematics. This is our, our big equation, the one we ultimately want to use because we want to know delta y, but we don't know something. So we have to look at another equation that uses velocity, and you can look at them, but the one that we're going to use is velocity in the y direction minus velocity initial is equal to a acceleration times delta t. And we use this because it includes what we don't know. And at the same time, uh, it has everything we, else we know, such as the final velocity, acceleration, and time. So, v sub y minus a y delta t is equal to v y naught. Okay? Or, if we substitute that in, Delta y equals velocity in the y minus a y delta t times t plus one half acceleration t squared. So I just substituted this right into here. Well, we know everything now. We know the velocity, acceleration, time. So delta y is equal to minus 40 meters minus 9.81 meters per second squared times 7 seconds times, we're going to have time here, so that'll be 7 seconds plus 1 half 9.81 meters per second squared times 7 seconds squared, okay, uh, per second, there we go, awesome, so if you plug all this in, you should get delta y equals minus 39 meters, now, this is following the same logic as the previous problem, we want the absolute value of this, which is 39 meters. So the height is equal to 39 meters. Again, the big thing to note here is we're looking for the net vertical displacement. So if you throw the ball straight up in the air from the building and it lands on the ground, you don't really have to go and solve for time or anything along that. The time in the air. It's completely unnecessary to split it into two totally different parts and work separately through it. It's much more efficient to work with the initial position just after it's thrown and the final position just as it hits the ground. If you wanted to break this up and looked at it at different time periods, you could do that. But it's much easier to think of it in terms of this being our start and this being our finish. And the other problem, it was more helpful to think of it as this being our finish as opposed to here because we were looking at the maximum height. This problem, that didn't really help our cause at all. 
Um, yeah, and the delta y being negative just talks about the vertical displacement. That also, I want to make sure that's clear. All that's saying, so I drew it here. We really think of the ball being thrown from here. That means it starts here and it ends up 39 meters below that which just means the height is 39 meters. Hopefully conceptually that makes sense. So that was free fall in one.